Dear listeners, I would like to preface this podcast going out with the fact that I had forgotten to turn my microphone on. So the audio from my end is absolutely atrocious. I didn't want to record it again just because the conversation was amazing and Lisa's audio quality was even more amazing. So please, I apologize to your ears for the tinniness and the echo. I've tried as best I could to improve it, but it's been a nice little lesson in, you know, (laughs) making sure that your equipment is turned on correctly and plugged into its appropriate socket. So um, with that in mind, we'll get on with it and sharing the love. This is the Reflector Reflections podcast. My name is Annie. Join me as we journey around the world, talking with fellow human design enthusiasts, specifically reflectors, as they experiment and navigate their unique design. Today's beautiful conversation is with Lisa. Lisa's a 2-4 reflector with the right angle cross of the Maya. Lisa is still new to experimenting with her human design, although, as we've discovered, she's been living her design for quite some time. And I'm really grateful because she's here to share her journey with us all. And I'm just so very, very honoured, Angel. So thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you so much, Anne. I just, I've been listening to your podcast for a couple of weeks now, and I can't get enough of it because I've been looking into human design for four months now, but it feels like four years because I, I've deep dived into trying to get as much information as I can on reflectors. And there's just not very much out there. And so when I found your podcast, I was like, she's speaking my language, all the people that she's interviewing and the interviewer herself. And so um, I I felt to reach out to you and say, hey, do you want to interview another reflector who's just brand new, a greenie at human design? And so here we are. And I have written a lot of things on my chart. <laughs> totally, She's come prepared, everybody. Totally Super covered prepared. it. <laughs> um, so I am new, but um, yeah, I've learned a lot in human design and it has helped me learn a, a lot about myself and how I process things and about my family and friends and how I work well with people and how I don't. And so it's opened up a whole new world of understanding that I had uh, previously to human design. It's it's so very much like that. And, you know, the more I speak with people, the more it is, it's sometimes when you find something that really you identify with, you're like, mm-hmm. I need to know everything. Right. So let's talk about you and this discovery. How okay. did you find human design or human design find you? Well, um, I had a friend, his name is Jordan. And he said, have you heard of human design? And I said, no, I've never heard of it before in my life. And I can't believe I haven't heard it of it because I try to dive into all of those self-help, self, self-discipline, fine and refine yourself and define yourself because I felt like I didn't know who I was. And I said, I would love to figure that out. Like, give me the link and I will try to see what this other program says about me. And it was spot on. And I'm still trying to figure it out. But I have found over my life that it just, the way that I feel the most peace is when I go within and I just listen to my heart. And uh, when I pray and when I ask God, that's when I feel the most myself. And so when it said a self theme and a not self theme, that was speaking my language. And I was like, what is this program, human design? This is amazing. So, um, yeah, he referred me to uh, like download one of these charts for free. And then he said, my friend, she reads human design charts for free because she's just learning about it. Do you want to, le- you know, hear what she has to say and I was like absolutely and they got my information and they freaked out because I was a reflector (laughs) like totally I was on the phone with them when they both started screaming in the background and I'm like what does this mean a reflector we found one we found one (laughs) that's exactly their response and I was like "Uh (laughs) uh-oh what are they what are they meaning are they gonna try to mind control me now that they found one what does this mean So, 
um, they just started saying all of these things about my chart and it resonated. It was right on. And they said, now, I don't know very much information about this or that. I would re recommend you go and research it for yourself, research it out. And oh boy, did I. And I was telling all my family and friends about it. Everyone who would listen to me, I've printed out everyone's chart in my entire household. There's, well, let's see, five, six, seven, eight here. All of them are printed out and they all want to know about it. And I'm like, I'm no professional, but I'll tell you what I know so far. <laughs> so uh, that's how I got into it. It was, it was a God thing and I'm helping a lot of people, uh, you know, just, just realize that they don't need a chart to tell them who they are. They don't need all these tools to tell them who they are, but it is fun. Like yeah. it's super fun for a reflector to tell someone else and see them light up. And especially if they're another reflector, which I've only come across one and that's my mom so yeah. far, but it's still fun. So I, it, and I want to talk about that parent, having a parent as a reflector, because the more that we talk with, with, um, with more reflectors, the more sometimes this is coming out. And in some of my research, I'm really starting to study the, like the genetic, the intergenerational kind of like wave. And is there any any science behind it? But I digress. Wow. I want to talk, I want to take you back, finding this, finding human design, being blown, blown by this, obviously getting a little bit of a reading done. Yes. <laughs> Navigating your way through finding some content. Would you mind sharing with this community? Because people, we were just talking off air about this, Sometimes, you know, a lot of people who speak on this podcast, ha you know, have been quite versed in human design for a while and they're like, oh, yeah, I went here, here and here because they don't want to talk until they know something, which I'm not saying you don't. But it's the <laughs> navigating through all the content and it's navigating how do people start this because we yeah. all start it differently. Would you mind sharing how you waded through the content and how you were able to go, no, that's not speaking to me? Yes, this is. I'm so glad you asked me that because um, it's going to be different for everybody, even different for each reflector, I would imagine. So um, I do feel that because I'm a reflector and I, I work on the lunar cycle, the 28 day cycle, which also really resonates me, um, re resonates with me. I have found that there's just one week a month that I dive deep into human design. And then the next three weeks I take a break and I, I go on to something else. Um, and there's a pattern the last four months that that's how I've done it. And when I dive deep, it's usually sparked by, um, like an inner knowing, like, um, I feel the spirit really strongly to start research, a, researching a, a gate, um, my, uh, incarnation cross my profile. And these are things I've already researched, but I feel to go deeper on these things specifically. And it's, it's not all of them at the same time. It's a subject. It's, it's just a detail. And that's in my chart is details <laughs> about a, a, a particular thing. And, so I just pray that my angels, my guides will tell me which websites to go to, which YouTubes to watch. And that led me to you, by the way, because I just found you, uh, what was it, like a week ago, would you yeah. say? A, two, a week or two ago. And I've watched as many as I could since then on your podcast. And so I feel that um, reflectors, and I think everyone has an inner knowing, but um, if they go within and they ask their heart to be guided to the right people, places, and things to help them learn about their own human design, that is the most beneficial and that's the most helpful. So they don't get overwhelmed because I think that I've gotten really overwhelmed by things and I, I don't want to do that anymore because then I just shut down and then I can't think straight. And so this way, I just got on a certain topic and I would just pray that it would lead me to the right place. And it did. And so I don't know how to exactly answer that, but to just listen to your inner voice, listen to your inner heart, you know, go with the flow. I know it says that we have no uh, inner authority. <laughs> and when I read that, I was like, that's kind of true because it's different 
like we received answers 10 different ways, 10 different times of the month. It's never the same. It's like so um, multifaceted. And that's what I love is the surprise, right? Yeah. yeah. But oh, actually, I, I do it. believe we we do have inner authority. And it is. I call we it do. Time. I call <laughs> yeah. it time. Um, and, and time's irrelevant. Like it doesn't, it's not 28 days. It's just time. And that is, right. I always sort of refer to it now as the pause, which I love what you were saying there about a taking pause, that. Yeah taking that breath and going in that's a very much a, a cause for me it's like whoa because it can be really overwhelming as as you've discovered and even you putting up that sheet of everything on there I'm like whoa <laughs> that's really yeah. overwhelming look at but all these things like I have so many papers that I printed out and wrote all over it's <laughs> it can be overwhelming that's why I probably only do it one week and then I'm like okay I need a three three week break I like, it's, it's actually such uh, sage advice too because what a beautiful way to break it all up and just go, oh, yeah. just dedicating this time to this mm -hmm. so you're not overwhelmed and even mm -hmm. when you are researching it's mm -hmm. there is so much information coming at you so what you were saying there actually sitting in and just going where am I being guided to next and and being mm -hmm. and letting that go letting that be enough right going actually, with the flow yeah I love that because we're always guided and I also love mm -hmm. what you were saying about it. it's like we're intuitively aware um I always talk about that the, we're like mushrooms in the world and we just pop up in either people's orbit or where who people need to be in our orbits to be able mm -hmm. to provide what we need if we take the time to listen to the the little whispers <laughs> that's exactly right the little whispers. <clears throat> now with um with your chart and with you and who you are, as we were saying before, like you are a two four, mm -hmm. and the two fours, you know, the profiles in human design. One, you find out you're a reflector, and you're like, "Wow, what is this?" Mm -hmm. And then you go researching that, and then you start looking at the profile. Would you like to share with us how that journey has been for you? Absolutely. Um, a so my profile is a two, four. So the two is the hermit and the four is an opportunist. And I felt like for, my, so this is interesting because I felt for the first 40 years of my life, I just turned 40 in October. And um, I feel like a shift has happened in my purpose when I was 38. And I feel like, like the first 38 years of my life, I was more of an opportunist and not much of a hermit um but now it has kind of shifted and i've wanted to be more of a hermit than an opportunist and i i only want like a very very small uh core quality community <laughs> of people i would say like eight or less people you know and that to me is more like a hermit and so i I think that's because I, I don't want to spend my energy or my time. And I've heard this from other people on your podcast, that there was a shift that happened in 2020, <laughs> that people are like, okay, I know what I want now. And I know what I don't want now. And I want real friends, real quality, amazing people that are going to help up uplift me and I can help uplift them and we can both ascend together. And that's what I want. That was the shift that took place in 2020 for me. And I feel that that is part of my profile, that it was a total like opportunist in the beginning. And now it's more of a hermit, still a little bit of an opportunist because I do have a lot of community channels, uh, gates, channels, whatever they're called in my chart. And I love tribe. The yeah. word tribe, community, like I will kill myself, uh, sacrifice <laughs> myself for community and tribe. And I would love to do that too for them. Is And that's like so crazy, probably for most people. They would be like, save yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, completely open G Center. You've got mm -hmm. so many um, gates that can link up to channels in the tribe, tribal and community circuitry and human design. For those playing along at home, that's kind of getting into the advanced levels of it and people mm -hmm. don't always need to know that but it is nice to know that that's where your energy is is kind of yearning to be because even though reflectors don't have channels 
Um, mm -hmm. We, I feel that we are, you know, we gravitate towards those that connect to our gates and that form yeah. those channels. And so yeah. with, with your design and how all the gates are sitting there hanging, they're reaching out. And so for Lisa, for those playing along at home, she has a lot of community <laughs> and a lot of tribal and it's very dominant, very dominant in her chart. I love what very. you're saying there for about, you know, 2020, the year of 2020. Mm -hmm. But also like for you, it's, or for, for us, the what they talk about a lot is that we're moving from a lot of our south node into our north node. And that also represents mm -hmm. that kind of leaving behind that and coming into your own kind of power. Um, it's good to look right. at that in our charts as well and just go, well, where is my south node? Or where was my south node? What am I mm -hmm. going towards? I've, I've found a lot of um, healing or a lot of like benefit in getting into that early on and just going, oh, okay, this is, I was over 40 when I found this. So it was like, well, this is the energy that I probably had in my past. This is mm -hmm. the energy now that I'm generating outward a little bit more. Do you find that as well? I do, Anne. And I'm glad that you brought that up because I asked myself, okay, when was the shift? Because some people say it's 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, somewhere in there. And mine was at 38 during 2020, where I went from gate, uh, the North node was 26 to gate uh, 45 of my, no, my, my South node was 26 and my North node was 45. Yeah. So I went from a sacred salesperson to a gatherer and I'm totally yeah a hundred percent I was having dreams of gathering people for years and yeah. years in 2020 and so I was like okay this is my purpose now you know to, ah, the angels were singing and everything it was really funny it is like that too and just getting back to what you were first saying when we started chatting it's not I think sometimes people can be a bit off put by anything that tries to put them in a box or they think, well, when you mention human design, they might be very much like, oh, no, no, I don't need anything to tell me who I am. But it's not really telling you who you are because even though we can share very similar charts, just being a reflector or being the same profile or having very similar gates, we have our own unique flavour and our own unique journey up until that point. So it's, yeah. um, I always sort of say to people exactly what you were saying there. It is, it's a toolkit. It's something that if you can, I always think if you can get to know yourself just a little bit better, right? it's worth it. It's worth having a little look, isn't it? Yeah. It is worth having definitely a look for myself, even if nobody else cares about it. I want to know myself. I feel like with such an open G center, I've struggled with finding out my purpose and who I am and where I was and, and where I'm going in life. And this is another tool. It's not my Bible. There's a hundred different tools out there that I've used, you know, like a reflector does, right? They are like on fire about one thing for one month. And then they're like, oh, that's cool. I'll put that on the shelf for later. And that's just the way life is always keeping it fresh, you know? <laughs> And we can shame ourselves about that a lot, I think, and that's a conditioned aspect of life, isn't it, where yeah. it's not okay for us to explore all these juicy topics in life or be curious about things. So the more <laughs> I, I kind of think, just be curious about everything because it's exciting oh. and that's where yeah. we're really getting that hit and it's like we don't have to finish everything we start because right. it's, it's like taking a sample of a bite of food and it's like, well, I don't really like that or I did like that, but that's enough for now. And I, yeah. I do feel you are so correct in the sampling, because when I read that about our, our aura was sampling, I do feel that I don't dive in, in deep to people's, uh, energy systems, you know, to feel the way deeply, like the way that they feel deeply. I feel that I, and it's not like I am, uh, an unfeeling person. It's just that I don't, and it's not that I'm not empathetic or sympathetic it's just a different sort of experiencing the world and I feel that I let things roll off my shoulders a lot better and I I I feel like this sort of bubble of protection if I'm if I'm even allowed to say that <laughs> even more so than a lot of other people where they're like I'm so affected affected and offended by that person and I'm like why <laughs> why are you taking that on to yourself you know I don't feel affected and offended by what that person said or did 
why are you let's work this out together type of thing you know <laughs> so it's really fascinating seeing the sampling and feeling it and realizing okay so everyone processes and experiences the world differently with energy and this is why i'm so different and this is why i'm alike um like i'm similar to certain people and different to others but i do feel the most uh, alike with other reflectors and um but the only person that I know is my mom and she doesn't care about human design at all. <laughs> and I don't, I don't talk to her that much either, but I would love to meet more reflectors in the community. That would be amazing. Yeah. Wonderful. And I want to take us back to little Lisa. It's always interesting when we take ourselves back to our childhood, which I'm sure you've done oh boy. because we do it. And yeah. being raised by a reflector and now that you know that, Again, I can really identify with this, just going, oh, wow, it makes a lot of sense. Could you share with us, take us back to little Lisa. How was your, how was your life growing up? <laughs> I would love to share. So I looked up my charts for my mom and my dad. My mom is a 5-1 reflector and my dad is a 1-3 projector. And um, I, I'm not sure what I should say on or off the record, but it was... Uh, it was hard. Their marriage was hard. <clears throat> um, they didn't understand each other. And I think that's because, uh, when they were married, they divorced in when I was in high school. So the whole time that they were married, looking back, I feel that each of them were living only 50% of their design. And so you could tell that they weren't fulfilled and that they were in their not self, uh, at least 50% of the time. And it helped me because I was able to feel what was going on and say, okay, this doesn't feel right to me. And this does feel right to me. So I want to learn from how this feels good to me. And I want to take that into my aura and into my personality. And I know that this doesn't feel good to me because they were being their not self theme. And I don't want any part of that. And that was really good to learn from my mother because she was a reflector. And so after they got divorced, my mother then started living 95% her human design chart. And after they got divorced, my dad started living 95% his not self, his, his bitterness, because, yeah. you know, projectors get into the bitterness. And I'm just like, what in the world happened after they divorced, you know? But it was, it was really good to learn and watch my mom live her not self and then start to live her true self. Because when I was in high school and growing up, I said, I never want to be like my mom. And the reason I was saying that is because I felt that she wasn't being authentic and then when she started living her true self and I started living my true self, um, and this started back in 2016, um, then we became best friends because we were both healing and we were both reflectors and we were both living our true self, you know, and, and, and feeling our, and, and listening to our authorities and, learning about ourselves through all these different tools that you were talking about. And it was beautiful. And so <laughs> it's just like, so crazy how that happened. Absolutely crazy. Were you always spiritual growing up? Like reflected children, are, there's, there's, there's a couple of different camps here because we can be really shut down and really, especially with your completely open G, you would have been caught in a wash, but talk to yes. me about your spirituality because I know. <laughs> so I've been baptized in four different religions. My mom was very religious, uh, Catholic first, then Baptist, then LDS. And, you know, the list goes on and on. And I, being a reflector and my mom a reflector, we love jumping, uh, religion hopping, you know, and just tasting all of the different things uh, about how you can connect to God and connect to yourself and love God and love yourself. And so she really helped me to get a, a, a nice, large um, taste for all of the different flavors of 
spirituality and life and religion and some things could be really good about that and some things could be really really bad and so I grew up my mom was a flower child she's a hippie at heart she will uh, say that and about herself and I grew up just like her and I love to say I'm a hippie at heart just like my mother because we're living our in our true self and ever since I was 16 I heard very clearly angels god you know and so yes to answer a big uh a small answer to your big question is yes I have been pretty spiritual most of my life <clears throat> not in the angels <laughs> open head center right there divine touch I know it's more than that but I just kind of go the d- divine touch you <laughs> to source god it's like absolutely la, la. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> it can be. It can feel like again. It's a, it's a bit of shaming around a lot of these centers. It's like, oh, well, I can. It, I can. I don't know about you, but you can get caught in things that don't really matter. But yeah. if you push that aside, it's just like I feel I can really connect to divinity. I can just absolutely be, and us with our completely open G's. Mm-hmm. I don't know about you, but I know yes. I'm watching you. Even your body language. I do this so much. I'm really learned to love and connect to my completely open heart and and I say to people all the time yes but it also means that I'm created for more love because there's nothing in the way <laughs> I love that my because <laughs> having an open g center um in some not self themes that I have found it says that they're always trying to seek direction for how to get more love and more direction and they they can't really find it by themselves and blah 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 and I'm like I feel that I found it you know I feel these last four years I have totally found that and I don't need anyone else or anything else all I need is myself all I need is to go within and meditation meditation and prayer is the way that i feel the most peace in my life now especially with all the chaos going on in the world that's yeah. the only way to survive nowadays yeah. you know <laughs> really <laughs> i always just say i am just absolute pure love nothing mm-hmm. you've got to mm-hmm. remember that sometimes when you know everything life gets thrown at you and you're like oh yeah. it's got to yeah. really center I, into I, that and that's how i center i i go right in and i i really mm-hmm. like take that in and go you are completely pure of heart. Pure yeah, there heart. was one time I did a heart session and I asked my heart, what are the things, what are the best words of affirmations that I can tell myself as I look in the mirror? And I got three things. Lisa, you are love. You are light. You are happiness. And I was like, okay, I guess I'm going to be saying these things to myself in the mirror. <laughs> this is from yeah. my own heart. I better listen. I am. <laughs> the I am. Yep. I- Yep. You ran, and I know that everyone does this. I don't know. I love that you did it and you've got all those charts. So when you found human design, I'm assuming that that's what you've done. You've gone and run everybody's chart who was around mm-hmm. you. Yeah. And especially with that open G, now that you know that, that's probably why. It's like, who have yep. I been influenced by most of my life? Can yeah. we talk about who is in your or who, whose charts were you running to have, yes. who have had influence on you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I, uh, all of my, the, the people that are in my tight, um, circle. And so that would be my best friends and their husbands and even some of their kids. And, um, then that would be also my ex-boyfriends and, uh, ex-husband. And so I found out that they were all generators, everyone that I've ever dated that I have been able to get a hold of their human design chart is a generator with a defined g center and i'm like oh so much sense makes complete sense to me because i was i felt i was always trying to grasp and and reel in who am i like where what have i been where am i going and i need someone else to tell me that you know that's what i've been trying to do most of my life i can see now you know in that conditioning to feel balanced, to feel complete. And now I don't need to do that to feel balanced and complete because I have all of that within me. And as a part of that, in, in your currently, your marriage, so do you yep. do you subscribe to any of the recommendations that they say? Do you sleep alone? How is, you know, 
you obviously in close so proximity. I'm glad that you asked this question because I wouldn't have said this if you hadn't asked this question. <laughs> um, I I started listening to some people saying that it's better that you sleep alone than with your partner. And so I did an experiment because that's what human design is, is a big old experiment. And I said, okay, I'm going to imagine that I'm going to protect myself with a reflector bubble. And so I will envision, even though I'm not sleeping alone, I will uh, tell my body and mind and heart that I am sleeping alone and see what happens. And I felt a huge shift and a huge change um, three times. So I did this experiment three times. And I would say, if I can, um, that it did feel better sometimes. Um, and other times it felt more disconnected because I was, you know, disconnecting. But the other couple times it did feel better. So I'm wondering if I was taking on uh, something from um, my husband or whomever, you know, if I, if I do this experiment more often, I wonder what would happen because I felt a shift. I felt an immediate difference that I was then all by myself. I did feel more peace all of these three times. That was interesting. So that's, that would be my answer. And I'm going to keep experimenting on that. Um, have you felt oh, a change or a difference if you sleep with someone or not with someone do you feel more yeah. rejuvenated and energized it depends you know it really does depend yeah and, and i've been it experimenting for some years so i did the whole yeah. i'm doing this and i i really appreciate yeah. what you're saying there about disconnection because mm -hmm. it's it's a conditioned again it's conditioning so we've had to have chats in our marriage about that again because it was hurt, a little bit hurtful it's like well why do you want to sleep apart and I'm like, yeah. I'm trying to explore. And he's like, okay. Yeah. But there is a separation because when you've spent this time together, anyway. Mm -hmm. um, I agree. And I, I totally do love, agree. I love my own space. Um, I really, right. really love my own space. And there are times mm -hmm. where I'm just like, I need to be on my own. Yes. But I have found in summary, yes, I would love to probably sleep alone all the time. But at the same time, I do like that connection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what I've yeah. found is it depends on how I'm faring through the week or the day. So if exactly. I've had a lot of contact with him, them, everyone, I've got children in mm -hmm. my house, mm -hmm. I'm feeling more of a need to retreat. And I would have agree with you. Empty mm -hmm. out, for lack of better words. But yes. if I haven't, if he goes away for work or whatever, it's just like I, I like that because it's like I've got mm -hmm. a little gentle hum back in my life. <laughs> yeah. So I don't subscribe to just sleeping alone all the time. I always take it on a case-by-case yeah. -case basis and how, how much – I need yes. to, I call that how much I need to rinse, how much I need to right. just. And, and I, I do believe that if we're living in our, our self theme, you know, our true self, then uh, we don't have to sleep alone um, all the time or even most of the time we can, we can process that and we can wash it out and, and drain the tank or whatever that we need to do. And it is, it is perfect. And just to listen to that inner voice, inner self, inner heart. Yeah. And, you know, when you're a parent, you got, well, but for me, you know, throughout all the years, it's just sometimes you've just got kids on you all the time. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I know the difference. I know the very difference when there's an emotional, emotional authority around me. They're the ones that I love to love. But at the yes. same time, it's like, all right, you need to go now. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, that's that's one of those it's it's not about generators it's about emotional authority for me that's how yes. sensitive I am to that defined yeah. will I'm like okay <laughs> yes I need to look in people's charts then for the emotional and non-emotional then that's another thing that I need to look for it's, it's for science and everyone again everyone's different in what they need and especially for you yeah. so I've got a lot of retreat and a lot of fallback in in my design and I feel that whereas yours yeah. is you know you're you go the kind of the opposite way, I suppose. I do. I do. So. I think I am a non-emotional. Does it show in my chart? I think when I researched it, I I'm a non-emotional. Well, we we don't have we don't have any authority, any authority except again. Oh, except that's yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's so we why don't have I any can't of that. Figure it out. <laughs> but, but you could, I guess, you could be because you've got those two gates in your ego and will center. So. And you've also got gate 45 coming down from your throat. 
So you've got a lot of things that will light up your will center. Yep. It's just sitting there. Yep. So, and, and if you're around a lot of people, did you say mm-hmm. you've got like eight people living in your house? Yes. Uh huh. Wow. I have a true tribe. I absolutely love tribe and love community. I love to, I've moved around a lot since 2020 because I, I'm a flower child, right? Yeah. And so I think I was born in the wrong era. You know, I wanted to be a hippie like in the 70s. And so anytime that anyone's like, hey, let's, you know, build a community together and all live on the same property. I'm like, I'm there, you know, <laughs> totally. So um, yeah, yep. We we are living the dream. I'm living the dream anyway. I don't know how anyone else feels about it. <laughs> That's amazing. And I guess because yeah. these are these are people who are in your your current orbit, my yes. terminology there. Do you know just briefly their designs and stuff? Obviously you've done that. Yes, I do. So one we have one projector. Um that's a girl, and we have um uh uh Janet is uh my best friend. Well, my best friend is also a projector and um Janet is a generator and my husband's a generator and um then uh we have okay so we have a projector three generators I'm a reflector and then uh the kids I believe one is a manifesting generator the other's a projector and the other's a generator right I think I got all that right yeah it'd be it'd be funny it's just really interesting (laughs) It's really interesting to explore who's who's in your space. And mm-hmm. They said that um, the projector, t- uh, when when Misty was learning about her type, she really loved because projectors love to dive in deep and to yeah. figure out all of the different dynamics of all the b- different people that are in the community. And she said, this is going to help me so much and my husband so much and the kids so much. And it really did. It, they told, they came back and said, Lisa, this has really changed our dynamic on how we invite people, you know, in the conversations and, uh, how, how they invite by them responding or whatever it is. I don't know. She figured it out and it was the best thing ever. It was like a key that she had to unlock all these locks that were, that were closed to all these doors that were closed to her before. And also, yeah, understand. I always love it because of the work that I do. But parenting by design, like you know, navigating our little people and understanding that we're all so very different. Yeah, um, yeah. Especially and projector children versus generator children. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And these kids are seven, eight. Um, don't quote me on this. And three, and they are telling me, Lisa, you know what design that I am? And I was like, what? And they're like, I'm a generator. And the other one's like, I'm a projector. And I was like, cool. Do you know what that means? And they're like, well, not really, but we're learning about it. <laughs> I'm like, yes. I wish I knew that at seven and eight. Uh, as we always say, though, like I don't know about you. Would love to hear, but I sometimes will say, I wish I knew this earlier. Yeah. The truth is, I would not have heard this. I would not have been able to bring it into my being. I I just wouldn't. I would have I half asked it, you know? Yeah. I just Yeah. Well. It's perfect timing when it was brought into our life. Because now we really appreciate it. Yeah. I feel that. Yeah. Well, in that case, with you having all of those people in your home, I hope you are getting to have a lot of time for yourself and be honored and I am that. yeah yes and once I learned about how a reflector it they and my profile is a two four um hermit um, opportunist I realized that I do need about a half an hour to 45 minutes of alone time or meditation or prayer every day like with my door shut totally away and disconnected as we talked about and it really makes a huge difference if I don't do that. And it's not like I have to do it at the exact time every day. It's not like I have to do it in the morning or the noon or the night, but I just work better doing it at night for some reason. Um, I don't know why, but um, around nine, 10 o'clock at night. Yeah, that really works for me to Sorry, get that recharge. And take it your yeah. chat, just wonder. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Because it's another deep dive, and it's the variable. What does my chart say? 
I was just going straight there going, oh, okay, that's interesting. I was just wondering whether you had indirect light, but you have direct, apparently direct determination, so it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> does that does that mean I need more scheduled times? I don't know what it means. I um, This is just the variables. And it's where those arrows go in the deep dive. Oh, the arrows, arrows, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so it's the deeper dive, and that's how you get a lot of that determination in your cognition. And so for yeah. you, it's like your cognition is smell, your environments is markets external um, and direct. I've got inner vision, indirect light. And the inner vision, that's why I was quickly looking, going, I wonder if yes. you have indirect light too, because I work in very dimly lit places um, oh, wow. to the point over the, the my life, if there is sharp light on me, like mm -hmm. you know the fluoro lights, mm -hmm. I get really stressed. And I never knew mm -hmm. why. I, mm -hmm. I live by candlelight. I live by, mm -hmm. um, so at night when the kids go to bed, everything gets turned off. It's very frustrating yeah. for my family because they, they like light. I like to wait around in the dark like I'm in a cave. So <laughs> I, I it, things like this just fascinate me because it's like I've always been this way. <laughs> yeah, and I don't like indirect light. I like very bright light neon I mean like I'm wearing very bright colors you know my shoes are super bright everything that is about you know what I wear and how I talk and my personality is very loud and bright you know <laughs> so, that's me I love that I love that because that's true acceptance of self just to go this it is. is and again referencing back this is one of the benefits of human design. It's just like a, it's a validation to just go, it's okay for me to be me. It's totally mm -hmm. okay for you to be you. We're all just beautiful little special snowflake. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. We've been going for a while. I'd like to sort of like slowly wrap us up, but something I'd really Thanks. like to ask you, if I may, mm -hmm. is helping reflectors discover human design I talk about it a lot I know that there's a lot of reflectors in the space of really actively trying to support us a lot more but mm -hmm. for you and your journey what do you wish that you could have had so I I feel that I have had um everything that I needed and so for other reflectors I would recommend so this is how I felt supported is because I had um, a couple people that have been learning human design for at least a year or two that I could, um, you know, call and text and ask questions about and have as a sounding board. And then I also had my community, my husband, who doesn't really care about human design, but he'll humor me with um, me learning about his human design. And that helps me learn about human design anyway. And all of the people in my community, not just were like, oh yeah, that's, a, that's great. And then the next day they didn't care about it. They kept coming and asking me about questions and they kept asking me um, if I could print out more stuff on it and what the best places to go for it. And I kept saying, hey, um, you could do AI. Uh, so they went to AI and found a lot of information really quickly within two days that I, it took me two weeks to find. They could go that route. Um, I went to Jovian Archive. I I went to, I would say, Facebook uh, reflector uh, groups. And I got into five uh, mm -hmm. groups, I believe. And that was helpful. Just reading the questions that other reflectors had and then reading the comments and commenting myself when I did not feel overwhelmed because it's a little bit overwhelming <laughs> with some of those Facebook groups with reflectors and, and the Facebook group with the human design, uh, just regular human design that has like, I don't know, 20,000. I don't know how many people that it has on it, but that helped me a lot. But there's a friend that I talk to once a week that's in Belgium that I met on a human design Facebook group that has really helped me um, a lot. And so shout out to him. Thank you so much for helping me because he felt uh, inspired by uh, by the spirit to reach out to someone and help them 
if they had some questions and that was me. And so I think that the universe, if you just put it out into the universe, you'll know where you should be led to. You'll know the people to talk to and you'll be able to feel out because reflectors are really good at feeling who's open, who's receptive and who's not and who's authentic and genuine about wanting to help us with these things and who's not. And so that's my experience is Facebook, Facebook and Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> that really helped me. And then YouTube videos on reflectors like this podcast. <laughs> yeah. That really helped me the most, I would say. Yeah, there is a lot of information out there. So thank you for so much. Ah, oh, so much. Yeah. Would you have, do you have anything to you'd love to share you've shared some beautiful wisdom already anything you'd like to share to your fellow sisters and brothers in the yes. discovery yes I would actually um I was looking over my notes and I feel that I don't need them I'll just speak from the heart so um with conditioning and deconditioning I would say that um no matter what design that we are we are loved you know and we are love and we are loved we love one another and we love nature and we, we love god and that as long as we listen to that inner voice and be authentic and just do the things that make us happy and make us joyful and keep on going on that path instead of the things that make us well for a reflector disappointed um, then that will be the key to happiness. That will be the key to purpose. That's what I have found to feel totally at peace more than I, I'm happy. I've never been happier in my entire life. And it was because in 2020, I started living my true authentic self and I didn't need human design to do it or really any other tool other than to just go within and say, Lisa, you are loved no matter what. You are loved for the good, the bad, the in-between. I love you no matter what you have done and no matter what you will do. And that was a total healing process of my shadows and everything about me. And that has brought me to this point and brought me to this wonderful community of um, people that I live with. And this is my dream. I'm living my dream right now. And um I'm an energy healer and I'm taking a traditional naturopathy program and learning plant medicine. And I, I'm doing it. I am doing all the things that I absolutely love. And I am a survivor of um, all kinds of abuse. And so I know that no matter what anyone goes through, they can rise above and become light and love and joy and happiness. That's what I would say. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. You're gonna make me cry. I'm really feeling that love and that open heartedness right now. Thank you there's, so much, Anne, for the mirror. bringing my on here to speak <laughs> my truth. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing when reflectors gather together because we really um, you can get into a really deep space of connection. And you I feel it. You felt it. Yeah, it's beautiful. And it is an open-hearted space. I know we always say, where can we reach out and where can we connect with you? And off air, we were talking about this beautiful community that you're working with. If you would like to share that, you may. If you don't, that's okay too. But... Yes, I would love to share that. Yeah. So I don't have um, a website yet, but I, like I said, I live with an amazing and work day in and day out with an amazing community and group of people. And, um, and so you can go to, um, gospelgrowth.org and we can put that in the, the, uh, details below the link below. And that's going to bring you to a landing page that can bring you to my husband's website. And cause I work with Janet and I work with my husband and I work with, um, so many amazing people on all these different projects that we were pulling all together to be authentic to learn who we are and our authentic selves and so yeah if you want to find more about who i am and what i do and the people that i love to love then please check that out 
you are the gift to the world. Angel, thank you so very much. Thank you for sitting in space with me, sharing, sharing you. And it's a true testament that, you know, you may have only recently discovered human design, but you've grasped more of living authentically and experimenting than some people have spent in years. So time is not a thing. Doesn't That's matter so how true. many years you've spent studying or doing or how many qualifications you've got in human design is a lived experience. And so just want to honor you in this and say thank you very much. Thank you so much, Anne. Thank you. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Okay.